So tonight you got 43 pointers, only made nine of them, but did you like the looks you were getting? It seemed like you guys were just missing some of the good looks. Well, that, that's been consistent throughout the year, you know, but, but this is my thing. Um, I think at one point we're two at 20. Uh, so it's a fine line, you know, you don't want to tell guys to stop shooting, but I was imploring them in the huddle sometimes, like, like PJ Dozier came down in the third quarter, I think, missed a three. Next possession, drove the ball, got to the basket and finished. We have to mix that in. You know, I mean, it, it just can't be shooting threes to shoot threes. And on nights where you're not shooting it well, and there have been quite a few this year, to be honest, um, we have to find a way to to attack the basket, get to the free throw line. Um, but then to your point, TJ, there were some that like you have to shoot. There's no one even near you. Great looks. Uh, but there are other ones where like it's a three on one break and we're shooting a pull up three. Now, th those are ones that, you know, we, we have to think attack and not settle in those instances. But um, two of the biggest ones were Aaron Gordon late, obviously back to back corner threes, uh, huge, huge shots. Um, and that was, you know, it wasn't a pretty win, let's be honest. But, um, you know, for us, any win is great uh, right now. You know, we knew this was going to be a hard fought game. Uh, that team is talented. They've been playing a lot of teams really tough, had chances to beat some teams. And, you know, we did enough to win. And uh, there's a lot that we can clean up. And hopefully we can uh, do that and get ready for Monday night against a very talented Miami Heat team. Do you have any update on Michael Porter? Uh, no, uh, to be honest. I know I, I saw him at halftime, talked to him quickly, uh, gave him a hug. But uh, I'll, I'll go back and talk to our training staff to see uh, to see what happened on that layup. You know, obviously he came down funny. Uh, and then that was the end of his night. Have you been struggling physically at all prior to that recent days? No, I mean, uh, you know, I think, you know, everybody's got bumps and bruises, kids, but uh, there was nothing that was, like, he wasn't questionable going into today. There was nothing that he was battling where I felt that he'd be a game time decision. So um, I'll have to go back and watch that play. Um, that's karma, man. Just give the ball to Will Barton to lay it up, and then we're not even in this situation. Uh, but it's unfortunate, you know, obviously, Michael, even though he has been shooting great, you know, he's a big part of our team. And so hopefully it's nothing serious and uh, we can get him back hopefully next game. But I'll have to wait and see what our trainers say. We've asked many times, but to what extent did the Joker really lead to this victory from the third quarter performance to block it? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I just gave him the defensive player of the game award. Uh, you know, because of that game saving block, you know, so like Will Barton got in Minnesota against a uh, Malik. Um, I told him at halftime, I looked at him, I said, you ready to play 24 minutes? And he looked at me, goes, whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, Nicole is a warrior. Um, and, you know, when, when things are in doubt, you play through him. And, you know, that's why he's a great player. And that's why we're fortunate that he represents this city, this organization at such a high level every single night. So um, it's a good win for us. Coach, the bench, uh, they get you a lead out of that fourth quarter mm -hmm. and up the 8.30 mark, and then Steven Silas takes a timeout. Uh, don't go back to Nicole at that stretch, and, and then the other bench sort of gets them back into that game. What, what is it about those moments, that, that timing there between getting the bench and the starters back into it that this team in particular has struggled with so much? Yeah, I don't have a, uh, you know, a black and white answer to that. I think every night it could be a different answer. Um, to your point, I thought that unit that was in there to start the fourth was playing well, um, both offensively and defensively. And I was excited about that. I was hoping that we could, they could sustain that. And I wouldn't have to rush to bring those starters back in um, because it's great to see. I mean, Austin Rivers, proud of him, you know, 10 year vet taken out of the rotation stays ready and goes out there and impacts the game. You know, I mean, that, that, that was really great to see. I was happy for Austin, um, you know, but that group was playing well. Then to your point, all of a sudden Houston answers, they go on a seven or run and I take a timeout and all right, now we got to get our guys back in. It's around 744 to go in the game and we need to bring our closers in. Um, so hopefully uh, I thought that bench unit was pretty good tonight. You know, I mean, I, I thought Jeff Green, you know, played an aggressive brand of basketball playing through him in the post. Uh, you know, Bones had an off night in terms of kind of shooting the ball, but that's going to happen. He's a rookie. Um, but I, I felt that this game, even though the numbers may not say it, I, I thought those guys gave us some good minutes uh, across the board tonight. We talk about players in very black and white terms. Uh, Aaron Gordon's not a shooter, but this is a shooter. Is part of his value that he can help these type of nights for you where he gets 
have the three the other starters, he does have that capacity even if not consistent yeah i think so i mean when we traded for him last year he was shooting career high from three in orlando uh and then obviously when he got here those percentages didn't stay where they were but um I was in the gym with Aaron Gordon this summer. He spent a lot of time here in Denver and he worked on his game. He worked on his shot. I think he understood that, okay, sometimes I shoot a really flat shot. I got to get it up. I got to hold my follow through just simple basics and fundamentals. Uh, and so I wasn't surprised to see those threes go in. He has that within him. Is he a 40% three point shooter that's going to take eight a game? No, that's not his game, but he's definitely not broke. And he's definitely a guy that can make that shot if teams are going to leave him open. And obviously those two back to back corner threes, you know, really kind of uh, saved the game for us. I have complete confidence, you know, uh, you know, to be honest. Um, and the reason I'm confident is one, he's a 10 year vet. And the second reason would be because how well he handled it when I spoke with him. You know, no one ever wants to hear that you're being taken out of the rotation. You know, th those are always tough conversations. Um, and, you know, I, I watched the, the game on Monday night in Memphis. I was in my room. Um, it was like two o'clock in the morning. And I'm watching the game and, and I text him because as the game is going on, when a good play happens, I see Austin Rivers off the bench clapping and cheering. Uh, and that meant so much. Like, those things matter to me. Uh, everybody gets caught and on the court and the stats. I look at a lot of the little things, the details. And to see a 10-year vet that had been pulled from rotation up cheering and supporting his teammates meant the world to me and spoke volumes about his character. So, yes, it was a tough conversation, but he handled it well. And he told me, he goes, Coach, uh, do I want to be taken out of the rotation? No. Do I think I can help this team? Yes. But I will stay ready. I'm going to support the guys. And what he said is almost, you know, like a, a, a foreshadowing. He goes, in this business, it comes around. It's going to come back to me, and I'm going to stay ready and take advantage of it. And here it is tonight. He went out there. He played with Eric Gordon. He knows that guy. And I thought he had some really good defensive possessions. He had a great driving kick. We missed his shot, but he made good basketball plays. And it wasn't a second unit was struggling because of Austin Rivers. You know, I was just trying to change things up, and he happened to be the fall guy. So, you know, by, by no means was I saying that one person was responsible for a five man group. Uh, so I'm proud of Austin for handling it as well as he did. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, every game is a little bit different. You know, I challenged our guys today, kids. I said, you know, we should never lose three games in a row. Uh, that, that should be something that is unacceptable in our DNA. I was proud of our guys. We lost to Cleveland and Utah on a back-to-back. -back. We came back and we, we beat Dallas handily, and then we beat Minnesota. We lost two games in Memphis. We came back and find, found a way somehow to get a win today. So when I'm watching film, um, I, I'm looking at the, the details, the discipline, our guys engaged, our guys communicating. Um, and I have all the hope in the world. I mean, uh, my expectations might be different than everybody else's, but you know, I just want us to continue to work and get better and try to be the best team we can be every single night and take steps in the right direction. We're five and four. I take a step back sometimes. I survey the NBA landscape and it is a weird season. I mean, like we're five and four and that's who we are, right? That's our record says who we are. You look across the other teams, teams that were in the finals, teams that are supposed to be top of the conferences. And a lot of teams are struggling. A lot of teams are trying to find themselves and we just have to worry about ourselves. We have a, a lengthy homestand and hopefully we can find a way to continue to take it one game at a time and try to get better each and every day. First loss on Memphis, you spoke about the effort of your team. It feels like tonight having those two big rebounds by PJ Dozier and then the game when he blocked it, it was an effort kind of one game. Does it feel like you turned a corner in that regard and the urgency is kind of set in for your team? Yeah, and I think with what nine games played, I, I don't think urgency or being ready to play has been a consistent issue. Obviously, that, that game on Wednesday night, uh, that was the first time my starters went out there and just got blasted. Uh, so that hasn't been a re reoccurring theme. Um, but yeah, it, it was great to see, uh, you know, us make some you know, big hustle plays. Like, and I'm glad you mentioned PJ Dozier, you know, PJ is so important to this team. And I went up to him, I talked to him today for a while. I talked, I grabbed a bunch of guys individually, talked to Jeff Green today, talked to PJ and I said, PJ, man, you know, I love you and we need you. And the fact that you're not playing to the best of your abilities 
isn't on you, it's on me. I'm not helping you enough. What can I do to help you? How can I empower you? Um, and, and I thought PJ, you know, playing with that starting unit, especially in the second half, played well for us. And you mentioned it, you know, we get a stop. He goes up and gets a big rebound. We have an ensuing possession that's not great. I definitely was thinking about taking the timeout, probably should have in hindsight, just to settle us down. Um, and, and he made some really good plays, rebounding, playmaking, and uh, we need that from P.J. Dozier. He, he is a really important piece to this team, and uh, i got to continue to help him and all of our players. Uh, that, that's my job as a head coach is to do that with these guys every single day. All right. Appreciate it, everybody.